Knowles. I'm Marsha Hampton. And we're the special guest host of City Connector today. Yes. Here at Arbor Place Mall. Um, we have a lot of great uh, guests on the show today. Uh, we've got the Mayor Mickey Thompson. We have Congressman David Scott. And we have uh, City Manager Bill Osborne going to do the uh, do an interview with Congressman Scott today. Um, but uh, I'd like to welcome our first guest, Mayor Mickey Thompson. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Well, thank you, Jeff and Marcia. It's a pleasure being with you today. Well, we want to just dive in. Dive right in. We've got a couple interview questions here for the mayor. We'll just go ahead and dive right in. Well, as you know, earlier today we had a meeting with the congressman briefing him on Highway 92. We just wanted to get your thoughts on it and how important this project is for the city. Well, this is a very important project for the city. And let me start off by saying this project would be nowhere today if it wasn't for our congressman, Congressman David Scott. He has taken a personal interest in this project and has done a tremendous job really shepherding this project to where we are today. And uh, we had an extremely good meeting this morning. Yeah, definitely, sir. Mayor, how long have you been involved in the process of Georgia Highway 92? Well, when we started, my hair was black <laughs> and I had some hair. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, actually, when I became a uh, city council member in 1995, we started this project, and there have been a number of stops and starts and regrouping and going back and redoing plans and environmental studies. And uh, I personally began to think that the project was not going to go anywhere. After we had spent about two and a half million dollars of engineering money and planning money until Congressman Scott. Uh, started helping us with this project and and now there's a there's a great deal of energy uh, in the community uh, in the city about this project because of that yeah, definitely and so what do you think are some of the key components we need to continue that uh, that process to move this uh, project forward well the, the project is important uh, for a number of reasons uh, first of all it will improve traffic flow in the city of Douglasville and actually in the western metro area tremendously. Uh, it will aid commerce, uh, but probably the most important aspect of this project is the safety issue. Going over the railroad tracks, we heard today someone was, I believe, hit there yesterday, uh, a pedestrian. So what is it going to take to, to move this project forward is exactly what we've been doing <clears throat> the last six months, and that is meeting the requirements of the Georgia Department of Transportation the Federal Highway Administration, and getting to the point where we can actually turn this project over to the Georgia Department of Transportation for the design stage. So uh, about six more months, uh, and I think we're, we're going to see that, that goal met. That's exciting. Yeah, there is. There is very exciting. There's been, a, like you said, over the past six months, there's been a large amount of uh, public involvement um, and, and community outreach basically involving the entire community. Um, can you tell us, have you heard any comments from the community about, about how they feel about Georgia Highway 92? Well, first of all, who would know better about the community involvement than you two? <laughs> Actually, uh, you went door to door many times to talk to people about the project and tell them about the project. And in the public meetings that we've had, and actually we had uh, one in really the, the center part of where this road is going to go, which was Stuart middle school and we had over 450 people there and if you look at the comments uh, that were submitted uh, in writing and verbally uh, the community has embraced this project they see real opportunity for the north side uh, many for many years we've we've heard the public say uh, in that area we need a grocery store we need attention to our community and this is the attention that that the north side community has been asking for for a number of years well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for being with us, and I would like to thank Congressman David Scott as well, and Jeff. Absolutely. Um, and we also, I guess, we're moving right along, and after the break. Marsha doesn't have her notes in front I of her. I don't. Are you? I can't <laughs> so, read. I need glasses. So, one, uh, of one of the two. So I, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and we'll pass it on over to the uh, City Connector in yes. just a moment. Um, following that, I would like to uh, share with you one of the bit, one of the tools we use uh, to to basically inform the community about what Georgia Highway 92 is going to look like. We did a uh, flyover, a virtual flyover. You'll see it in, uh, in just a moment. And then uh, 
following the City Connector, uh, City Manager Bill Osborne will be up here interviewing uh, Congressman David Scott. So we'll be right back. Thank you, Senator. Janice, I think that was our cue for the part of City Connector that we do every month, and that's our interactive community calendar. Good to see you on this side of the new year. Absolutely. I trust you had a wonderful Christmas. Great holidays. Okay. Tell us, who do we have coming up first joining us today? Well, we have really uh, our first guest is Kimberly from the city of Douglasville, and really she needs no introductions because she's a regular guest here. And she is a regular, and you always have lots of good, interesting things happening. Give us, a, give us an idea. Well, last year, the Douglasville CDB offered free bridal shows for brides in the area looking to host their wedding. We wanted to let them know that they can have a wedding here in Douglasville, and we have the facilities, and we have the professionals to assist them, again, going along with our Buy Local program. So this year, we're going to do that again. We're going to have a series, where we're going to focus on outdoor venues. Our first bridal show is our bridal tea at Le Jardin Blanc. So we're going to have our local um, professionals come out and assist brides and also showcase the space. So this is an opportunity for, I guess you have maybe selected vendors to kind of give an idea. If I'm a new, well, I don't want to say I'm going to be a new bride, but if there's a new bride in the community looking for a wedding, then they can come to this workshop and find out what? They'll find out the local photographers that are in town, um, florists, if there's an event planner around, they'll be able to find that. But promoting local vendors, people who work in the community and bring the dollars into our community and help us grow into a better uh, community and organization. Um, it is April 18th. I forgot to mention the date. If you're interested in signing up, you can go to our website at www.visitdouglasville.com. So if I'm a potential bride, this would be like a one-stop shop. I can come and get all of my mm -hmm. photographers, florists. Yes, it is. It's a one-stop shop. Um, it's free to them, so it's a great deal. There's also going to be prizes and giveaways, so why not come? Absolutely. And that date again was April 18th. 18th it is 2 to 5 p.m. All right. Wow, that sounds exciting. It is. Visit the website and find out more information, That's right? right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kimberly, so much. We appreciate it. Wow. Can't say I don't want to be another bride. So, Miss Janice, right. go ahead. Tell us who's coming up next. Well, we have two wonderful students from Harvester Christian Academy, and uh, they shared with me that they're both Beta Club members. So Great. So we're delighted to have you here. So who do we have with us today? Hi, I'm Allie Yancey. And I'm Stephen Boyer. And uh, we're members of Harvester Beta Club, and we attend Harvester Christian Academy. We would like to invite you to dinner with two former UGA stars and two former NFL stars, David Green and David Pollock. Mr. Green and Mr. Pollock will be our featured speakers at our gala and auction to be held on March 19th at Central Baptist Church. The doors and the ballet will open at 6 p.m. Ballet, as in ballet parking. Yes. That's right. Stephen, sorry, did I interrupt you there? No, ma'am. No. <laughs> and you mentioned auction items. Wow, that piques my interest. Yes, ma'am. Can you give us a little sample of what we might have the potential to? Well, um, there's always tons of auction items. Um, it'll be vacations, um, eating like for restaurants. Um, we have turtles. <laughs> there's some animals, prom dresses. E everything. They have yeah. everything. And they're donated by a local and state businesses. And all the money raised goes? Goes to Harvester to just um, better our community, the school, and the world. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. A great event. I think you guys host this every year. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So um, great uh, opportunity for someone who's a big football fan. Who are those guys again? David Green and David Pollock. All right. So if you're, uh, tell us again the date and the time. Um, the date is Friday, March 19th, and it starts 6 p.m. And if I um, am just someone looking in from the community and I would like to reserve my spot, how would I go about doing that? Well, there's a website. at uh, It's called www.harvesteracademy.com. That's www.harvesteracademy.com. And for more information and to reserve tickets, you can go to the website. Wow. wow. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, and I hope that event goes very well for you guys. Thank you. Thanks so much. Janice, a lot going on, and we have a special City Connector today where we're talking about the Highway 92 project, which is going to impact our total community.
is the virtual fly through of the Georgia Highway 92 project. Uh, we begin on the south side of the project uh, at Plaza Drive, uh, close to the Martin's Restaurant. And as we begin to fly through the project, headed northward, as we approach uh, Durley Lane here, uh, crossing over left and right, uh, we begin uh, to depart from the current Georgia Highway 92 path as it begins to veer to the to the wet to the east and north um, we continue through that is the current Georgia Highway 92 intersection where uh, Fairburn Road and Highway 92 will intersect what you see there on the left is the Hospital Drive intersection uh, we continue to move further northward Magnolia Park on your left uh, we're approaching Brighton Manor here on your left um, and you see uh, Cooper Street uh, the intersection of Cooper Street there um, as we move through uh, northward still continuing northward on the project you got Fulgram Drive you got the uh, that on the right there and uh, we just went through the intersection as we approach the underpass here at uh, Highway 78 uh, the railroad tracks and Strickland Street we continue to move further northward at the intersection of Ellis Street uh, Ellis will continue through to Brown. You see Brown Street over there on your left hand side uh, as we're approaching uh, where we uh, bisect uh, Brown Street. You see the cul-de-sac uh, on the uh, western component of Brown Street and also the component of the uh, Brown Street on the eastern side uh, where it's also cul-de-sac. That's where we we split Brown Street. Uh, now we have Brown Street running on the right hand side or the uh, the northeastern side of the project. Um, the intersection here is a signalized intersection at Colquitt Street as we continue to move through the project. Um, you see Green Street on the left with the cul-de-sac. You see Cone Street on the left with a cul-de-sac. Um, and we continue to move further northward. Uh, you have Malone Street there that uh, goes into Jesse Davis Park on the right. And on the left is uh, it continues down to the Georgia Highway 92. Uh, old Dallas Highway uh, Road. You see that on the left also. Uh, this is where we merge back in with the Dallas Highway uh, existing path and uh, we continue to move further northward. You see fire station number 11 there on the right as we approach a signalized intersection in Altry Circle and then uh, our next intersection coming up will be uh, Malone Road. There will also be a signalized intersection there. Uh, continuing further northward, this is where the project begins uh, to come. Phase three of the project begins to come to an end. You see it there, uh, where it begins to, where we begin to turn around and look uh, further south um, down the project. Uh, this is the new Georgia Highway 92 uh, and how it uh, how it moves through the city of Douglasville. It's my sincere pleasure today to welcome to City TV's City Connector program the Honorable David Scott, United States Congressman from the 13th Congressional District. That district, of course, uh, includes Cobb County, part of uh, Fulton County, uh, most of Clayton County, uh, Henry County, DeKalb, and of course, uh, virtually all of the city of Douglasville and, and most of uh, Douglas County. Mr. Congressman, it's great to have you with us today. Well, thank you, Bill. It's great to be with you. It's always a pleasure to uh, be with you here in uh, Douglasville and Douglas County. Thank you for having me. You know, about two years ago, uh, January 2008 specifically, uh, you were my guest on the Only Agenda program, which I do on a regular basis for City TV. And we talked at that time about the Georgia Highway 92 uh, relocation project. Uh, and of course, we talked about the importance of that project from a transportation standpoint, uh, as well as uh, future economic development in the city of Douglasville. And uh, uh, of course, for people who may not know this project, if we're traveling north on Highway 92, Fairburn Road, right at the top of the hill where Chick-fil-A is, the proposed relocation goes off to the east, would give us a railroad underpass just to the east of the old mill there on Bankhead Highway and then continue north and bend back so that it connects to uh, the current Highway 92 Dallas Highway up near where the fire station is. And of course, uh, you know, we have been trying to get this project to move forward for a long time. Uh, but 
uh, you stepped in, as I've described, came to our rescue. Uh, uh, tell us why you thought this was an important project and why you decided to make it a priority. Well, I certainly will, but first I want to thank you for the leadership that you have provided this. Certainly your mayor, Mayor Thompson, who's just been a marvelous leader on this. And while I'm at it, I want to congratulate the mayor. For those of you who may not know, the mayor is a automobile car racer. Right. Uh, and he is good. Uh, he won three races recently at Daytona Beach. Right. At Daytona National Speedway, driving the entire amount for the Sports Car Club of America. So in addition to being a mayor, he is a uh, he is a car racing star. And I uh, want to congratulate him on that. You know, uh, Mr. Congressman, he may not have told you because he's pretty modest, but he was selected by Florida to be their race driver of the year in, in that uh, age category. Hey, man, I tell you, you know, he and I both are, are, are auto racing fans. Right. You know, I've gone to NASCAR races all over the place. Uh, but uh, the closest I got in the car was going out to Atlanta Motor Speedway. I got in my old car at that time. I had a Firebird that went in there, came out. It hadn't run right ever since, so I had to park it. But uh, to get in and do, do what he does is just great. But and I want to thank Council Lady Danley and your new council member, Davis, for the excellent job and leadership they're providing. They represent the uh, part of the community that is going to be most impacted with this. Uh, the DOT, uh, Georgia DOT, uh, with uh, your engineer, Gerald Ross, who's working on this. Highway uh, Department, uh, Federal uh, Highway Department, uh, working on this, Croy uh, Engineering. I mean, there's a great team effort right. that's going forward to make this, and it's such a joy uh, for me just to be involved. And uh, of course, uh, we have uh, got some money in there, about $4 million already that we're operating on to get this project moving and off the ground and get the studies. Um, I might add, well, this is a part of our national transportation uh, plan. This is a major, major undertaking. Uh, the people of Douglas County and Douglasville certainly uh, need to appreciate the magnitude of this. I think by the time it's finished, it will probably be about a 60 $65 million dollar right. project. That is about the biggest, I think, in the history of the uh, city and the county. Right. It will impact this entire western part of Georgia, Paulding County coming in. The reason why I am so interested is because, first of all, I really love the people of Douglasville. Uh, it's just a joy to represent the people of Douglasville. I know many of them personally. They've been such a, such a uh, great support base for us. The other reason is because of the excitement, uh, the uniqueness of this project, and that this will open up, and I think, quite possibly, more than double the economic growth and development of this region. Uh, and it will make Douglas County and Douglasville a major player in the entire southeastern United States, largely because this road coming through will bring traffic all the way mm -hmm. through. And it will, it will, right now, uh, the growth stops. This city is a captive of the railroad train. Mm -hmm. When that train comes through, right. this comes to a standstill. And that stymies grow. And so this will open it up. This whole area will be able to breathe and will be able to uh, grow. The downtown area will be able to grow. I think it will make a great attraction for attracting additional uh, economic development mm -hmm. to this region once you have this traffic movement. And the biggest part of it is, of course, no longer will the traffic come to a stop because it will go under the railroad track and go all the way through. I think that the other reason is that I believe, done rightly, and if we do it the right way, and that's the way that uh, you all are doing it, um, um, Marsha Hampton on your staff is just doing a great job right. uh, in spearheading this. From the standpoint of making sure that the community buys into it, that not look at this road as something to get people through here to 75, but to look at it as a way to enhance and improve the residential value and quality of life for this region. 
Right. That's what is paramount. Um, and that's why I am very much concerned about making sure that it is pedestrian friendly, it is neighborhood friendly. We want to make sure that we have enough money within our budget to make sure every home, every business that will be relocated, and there are about 40 or 50 businesses and homes that are going to have to be, those individuals will have to be treated very fairly and generously to make sure that they are happy with this road. Thirdly, we have to make sure that this road is not a barrier to separate the community, mm -hmm. um, but is a, a fulcrum and a catalyst to bring the community together and lift the value of living. For example, there are about four major pocket areas that we have to make sure we're concerned with that. Where it begins, Dallas Highway, Malone Street, you have Jesse Davis Park, you have Alice Hawthorne Community Center on one side of the road. On the other side, you have Cone, you have Green, you have Colquitt, you have the old Dallas community on both sides. So we've got to immediately look at this to make sure that we have the pedestrian way in which children will be safe and the safest way to make sure the children get from this side of the road to be able to enjoy and participate in activities in the park, as well as our Hawthorne Community Center. And then you also have the Majestic Learning Center there. And you have all the residents on there is to make sure you have pedestrian crossings to go over. Mm -hmm. In addition to your regular traffic light there that we have, but we have to have strategically placed throughout the road pedestrian overpasses that are very attractive. We have to make sure it's well lit and we have to make sure that that community, that brown community, that is going to be the most impacted community, that this is a joyous experience for them, that they're happy and they can see their residential quality of life uh, expand with this. All right. Well, I, our viewers certainly just listening to you talk about this project know that you not only have a, a passion for this project, but you've got a lot of knowledge about this project because you have focused attention on it. When we, on the, uh, on the agenda program a couple of years ago, we talked about the project. And I know as you looked almost a year and a half later at what had happened between the time we did that interview and where we were at that point, very little had happened. Uh, and you decided just to take the bull by the horns right. and uh, work with us. We set up a, uh, a uh, public uh, hearing in Douglasville, as the mayor mentioned earlier in this program, I believe, on August the 1st of, of last year. Uh, here we are six months later. A lot has happened. In fact, earlier today, uh, we were together at the downtown right. conference center, and it was the opportunity for the city of Douglasville, for the Georgia Department of Transportation, Federal Highway Administration, uh, representatives of different neighborhoods along the proposed route to report to you, uh, uh, to give you a briefing on what had happened during this last six months. And then you made a comments and, and had a, a, a dialogue with some people uh, uh, at the, this uh, briefing. but. Uh, tell our viewers, uh, share with us what you considered some of the key points that came out of the briefing this morning. Well, I think some of the key points were, uh, number one, that, uh, that of many of the concerns that I had were already being addressed. Uh, and the openness with which uh, both the Transportation Department, the engineering, were able to take for some of the recommendations um, that, that we made. Um, I think that uh, to get the acquiescence from the community that was there, uh, that we need to make sure that children are safe. Now, I want people to understand that this is a major obtrusion. It is six lanes. Um, I would say take I-75, which is six lanes, and think of it coming through a residential neighborhood. There must be concerns about, for example, the speed limits. If that speed limit now is 35 miles per hour, it needs to be 35 miles an hour. It has, you, you have to make this community 
um, continue its upward progress as being a community that has high residential value so that young families will continue to move in, that you have a number of elementary schools there. We have to make sure, again, that we have the proper pedestrian uh, uh, entities in place so that they can cross over the road. The other thing is we have to make sure that there is no cut through to make sure that people who are coming in from Paulding County and wherever from Cobb and coming north to get through to get to 75, they don't use that community and abuse that community by taking shortcuts or coming through there. That has to be addressed. Um, and the other point that I think that we got great acquiescence is that when we have things like a noise barrier, which is very important, mm -hmm. that that noise barrier be dressed up, that there are trees there, that there are foliage there, so it folds right in to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that if we do those things, we will uh, certainly come a long way in making sure that, uh, that this, uh, this, this road plays a vital role in bringing the community together and will be something, a badge of pride. Um, and, and the most important thing is that everybody along that route, Brown Street, Colquitt, Cone, Green, Malone Street, all the way up, are very happy right. that they have this road here. And we can do that, but we have to be very sensitive to those concerns at that point. The, the other thing that I was um, very, very pleased with was the cooperation, the positive nature. Everybody not only wants this road, they want this road now. Right. And we're going to make sure that we get it done as quickly. But we've got to do it right. Mm -hmm. We've got to make sure that everybody is happy with this road. We have the resources, we have the money, we have the capacity to do it. Um, I'm familiar with the road we had uh, going up into Atlanta. Some people may remember it was the Freedom Parkway. Mm -hmm. If you ride through there, it's a thoroughfare, it goes all the way through, but it's neighborhood friendly. It has the crossing, it has the bicycle paths, it has places where they can walk. We gotta make sure it's lit very well. And we might to make sure, this is very important, that you monitor that speed limit um, there may be things like maybe a little speed bump here and there to discourage people from going in and increasing traffic inside those streets. And I might add, as I said before, uh, we want this area to grow in terms of home ownership, of young families moving in as other families move out. You have elementary schools, there are churches there, there are daycare centers. This is not a dying community. It's not something you're moving the road to. This is a vibrant, growing, alive community. And I may just say one other thing. There are many small businesses on the, on the current Dallas Highway. Mm -hmm. There are barber shops, there are grocery stores, there are schools, there are churches, all coming all the way up to where Dallas Highway is now. We've got to fold those into the entire downtown business community so those businesses grow and be vital. Because when you move that traffic off, you're moving some that might stop at one of these stores or a little restaurant. So we've got to make sure we compensate for that. And I go back to the Hispanic uh, community. That, uh, to have the Hispanic people there knowing, knowing that, and I think it's a big lot, and up around Cooper Street and Hill Street and Dorset, up in that area, uh, that's going to devastate that shopping center. And in there are Hispanic-owned businesses. Right. And it's not just relocating those businesses. We got to understand that those business one feeds the others. Yes. So you can't. You got to be able to be sensitive to make sure that they are able to relocate their businesses in a group because one goes from this shop to that shop to that shop, and we want to maintain that. And it was so good to have the Chamber of Commerce there. Yes. You have a wonderful Chamber of Commerce, right. uh, and uh, they were there to, to, to work with it. We're here in this mall. Uh, Arbor Mall is uh, well known all across the region. When we open up that road and we begin to get more people in, that's going to help this mall to grow and to prosper in the businesses here. 
So uh, it was good hearing from everybody there. Uh, we're very, very excited about going. And I'm very, very pleased with the positive spirit right. of the community. And what I take back to Washington with me is when I go before the Transportation Committee, I can say without question, we've accomplished the number one most important thing. And that is that the community, which is most impacted, has bought into this and they're ready to go. All right. You know, we focused a lot of attention the last few years not only on Highway 92 as we've been describing it, but recently there was completed the project, uh, and we talked about this two years ago, the widening of Highway 92 Fairburn Road going oh, yeah. northward from south of I-20. We have the new bridge uh, that's wider, higher, longer, and actually the northern end of that project is where this new project will start. And uh, as you say, it will disrupt uh, everything with where the Big Lot Shopping Center is, curving around, will give us our first railroad underpass uh, in, in Douglasville, as you mentioned earlier. When the train goes through, everything mm -hmm. shuts down, including if you're trying to go from the north side to get to the hospital. Uh, comment, if you will, on, on how you believe the, the completion of Highway 92, which will be a few years down the road, what that will mean in terms of tying together Douglasville's north side and south side, both from a convenience standpoint, but from an economic standpoint. Right. Well, absolutely. The first point is this. The railroad track separates it now. Right. That's, that's a barrier. What this road will do will break down that separation barrier to be able to connect where it doesn't stop, comes right underground right. to it. Um, and when it ends there and gets into Hospital Drive uh, at Fairburn, that's going to cause a major, major uh, challenge. Um, you've got any number of businesses, uh, but it's very important that, in the, that the people of Douglasville understand that that is, a, that is the major, uh, will cause a major disruption over a period of time. But there's a plan to detour. There's a plan to make sure that it's very convenient for people to be able to go around as the construction takes place. But it's so important for it to melt right into. And the, the, the point is that, you know, we worked uh, feverishly with the expansion a few years back of the other part of Fairburn Road. Mm -hmm. So that it's clear straight uh, on through. And it's not only uh, good to feed traffic into uh, I-20 that's going, but to take it on throughout into the southern part of the county. Right. Because that's why we widen the Fairburn all around to Anawake, mm -hmm. all the way down into the south, going into Fulton, over there by Bontory Works and Mount Vernon and Lee Street right. and all of that. So it, it makes for a seamless continuity uh, that just is going to be wonderful for this uh, for, for right. this county, and uh, I'm just uh, just pleased with it. The, the the other thing is that why it's so important is that emergency situations arise, and when you have the hospital on one side of the track, and half the city on the other side of the track, and you got the train coming through, and you got an ambulance that can't get through one way or another. Right. This improves that that automatically increases the residential quality of life for people who live on the other side uh, of the track. Um, there's a fire station over there. I was very pleased to, to know how we're gonna handle that fire station. And I was very pleased that they took my suggestion of putting a stop light right there in front of that fire station that's synchronized to the alarm. So right. we don't use it all the time, but once once that fire alarm comes in, everything's got to stop so that fire truck can get right on out and get on to his uh, take care of putting out the fire. Right. This has been a, a long trip that we've been making on Highway 92. I think we can see the end in sight. We've got about a minute uh, for a wrap up. Uh, give us your closing thoughts, uh, both on where we are uh, quickly, what you're doing in Washington, to, to, so we got the money as we do this, and we just want to thank you again sure. for being involved with this. Well, what I want to say is that, um, let's put it this way, what, what this county and city have with Highway 92 now, it's sort of like a rope you throw off the cliff to help somebody. 
And you can use that rope to pull yourself on up to safety and a great opportunity, or it could be used to hang yourself. Let's make no mistake about it. Everybody must get involved in this, every stakeholder. And that's why the very next order of business is, as I said in that meeting, we need to make sure we have everybody that's impacted, whether direct or even think they're impacted. And we need to knock on their doors, make sure they're aware, make sure they understand, as we did today. Community involvement and participation is the main thing that we have to do here now. Um, as I go back to Washington, as I said before, uh, we are ready to move with the appropriations. That is not the problem. What we've got to make sure is that I reach the happiness level. Right. I want everybody to be happy. And I want to hear from everybody who is not happy. Because then we can make them happy. Because a lot of things just rest with getting the right information to them. But uh, uh, you can take your hat off. The people and the leadership of this county and this city have done a marvelous job of setting this table. You've done a yeoman's work. And you ought to be very, very proud of yourselves. And uh, we look forward to getting this road moving. And hopefully within, I think it would take about four years. We're looking at about four years. And uh, we'll be home free. All right. Mr. Congressman, we appreciate you being here. Now, later in this program, we'll be back for a few questions additionally uh, for you. But delighted to have had you here today. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Good to be with you. Well, Janice, here we are at another interactive community calendar where we get the opportunity to inform our viewers what's going on in the area. Uh, who do we have up first today? Well, we have another familiar face with us today. We have Sarah joining us from the Cultural Arts Center, and she's going to share some exciting things that they're doing at the Cultural Arts Center. Yeah. Um, we have a couple of events coming up this month. Um, our, we are doing Celebrate Black History Month, so we have um, an African American, two African American artists, Jacob Lawrence and um, Up John, who's actually a local artist, and we have their pieces on exhibit through the end of February. We have the opening reception this weekend. Um, it's on Saturday from 6 to 9, and then we also have an afternoon with authors sponsored by the Douglas County Connection Group on the 21st, and it's from 3 to 5 p.m. And we also have our first of our three Kenna Concert series, which starts um, February the 13th. So it's right in time for Valentine's Day. And we're featuring Joe Chapman. Um, there, You can purchase tickets online or you can come to the Cultural Arts Center. And we finally, um, it's kind of a sneak peek for March, but people usually like to come get their tickets early. It's for our Cowboy Poets Gathering. And it's at um, Chapel Hill High School this year. We're changing location. And again, you can buy tickets online at our website artsdouglas.org, or you can come by the CAC. Wow, that's great. And we are so fortunate here in our community to have a cultural arts center that just brings so many outstanding things for our citizens. They do. And, and I've uh, attended the Cowboy Poet, yeah. and that's fun. So if there's anybody that's kind of into the Western idea and theme and that type of thing that's at Chapel Hill High School, yeah. A couple other things. Tell us where we can find all of those events again. Yeah, you can visit our website. It's www.artsdouglas.org. And we also have a Facebook page, too, if you want to check us out there. Okay, become friends of the uh, Cultural Arts Center. Yep. Thanks. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for all that information. We'll check it out, okay. and I uh, hope to see you there. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Janice, we've had a lot of information today on this program, haven't we? Yes, we have. And Great things happening right here in our community. Always changing, growing, and looking ahead to uh, make it a good good place to live, work, and play. Absolutely. On City Connector, we're going to be right back. I believe that the conclusion of our program today, Jeff Knowles and Marsha Hampton, are going to be uh, fielding a couple of questions from our audience to Congressman David Scott, who we're very excited has been part of this program with us today. also want to say thank you to Jeff and Marsha for filling in for us today, haven't they? Absolutely. And did a great job. Did a great job. Thank you to the mayor for being here, giving his comments, and as well as our city manager conducting our interview for us yeah. today. And We've of course, busy. we have him. We'd like to remind our guests. That's sure. our audience that's uh, tuning in. If you have something you would like that's to right. share with the community, we invite you to come here the last Tuesday of each month at 1130 and tell us what you're involved in. That's right. We want to keep the community informed. All right. We'll be right, right back with City Connector.
Welcome back to City Connector. Uh, <laughs> that was a slow gonna, applause. That was that a slow applause. We're not doing a good job. I know, I guess. <laughs> but we're going to do something really interesting on City Connector that we've never done before. We're going to do a Q&A session uh, where we're, uh, audience members mm -hmm. are going to ask uh, questions and uh, our congressman and uh, possibly our city manager will respond. Mm -hmm. The first person who signed up, we have Mr. Jack Tyser. He is the chairperson of our Downtown Development Authority and also a business owner in the downtown, owns Anchor Heating and Air. Mr. Tyson. Thank you. My question is, what effect will this project have on me as a local citizen as it relates to my taxes and also as a businessman in the local community? Okay. Well, as far as um, your taxes, there are no taxes going to be increased. You don't pay any extra tax and your tax dollars that are already been appropriated are going to be put to good use to generate more. I would say that this, and this is a good way of looking at it as a businessman, you look at this as an investment. If you look at Arbor Mall, the key to Arbor Mall, the key to Douglas, downtown Douglasville is getting more people into this area from this region to come into the stores, to come into the restaurants, to come into the place of business and spend their money. This is going to bring a lot more people in. We're bringing them in to another way, which means this is going to increase the accessibility. Uh, and quite honestly, you have this mall, Arbor Mall, which is arguably one of the best malls in the entire southeastern United States. Uh, I can tell you that. Uh, and by having this access of people coming in now, unobtrused by the railroad and know they can get right down into this area, you're going to increase that, uh, that traffic and that flow. It also provides you with an opportunity to put businesses in this new area. One of the important things about this is the fact that this road coming in through, uh, coming in from starting there at Malone Street on in, once you get past Malone Street, you get past Cone, you get past uh, Conquid and Green, you have a lot of space there. There's some emptiness there in which there can be some additional businesses uh, that can be developed along that route as well. That's another reason why I would stress making it pedestrian friendly, neighborhood friendly. Now, you're going to have at least three to four traffic stops along this road. Uh, those are opportunities for people to also in engage in their business. Once you move and you make the, make the uh, big expansion right here at uh, Hospital Drive and, uh, and uh, Cooper Street, uh, that's going to take out some existing businesses, but it'll also give an opportunity for other businesses to, to take its place. And the, the other thing is this. You have a historic downtown location. And this will act as once this traffic, it doesn't stop that traffic, it just feeds it to come around another way. Uh, so I think you look at this as an excellent opportunity for business. Uh, no tax dollars being uh, spent, or uh, no, I'm sorry, not spent, but raised, but your tax dollars are being put to excellent use to generate additional monies and growth for your region. Ms. Tyson, just I add one thing to that. You know, the city of Douglasville has spent more than two and a half million dollars on uh, the preliminary engineering and the environmental work. And so with what Congressman Scott is, is making possible now through his work in Washington, and as we work with uh, GDOT and Federal Highway, that investment that we've already made uh, becomes a real good investment because as the Congressman said, we're talking about getting maybe close to $70 million in terms of this new road uh, construction and, and the new facilities. Mm -hmm. So our two and a half million dollar investment, we're looking at a great return as well as the facility we'll have. The, the other thing is this, it gives your chamber of commerce and your downtown economic development individuals great marketing opportunities that you don't have now. With the road comes additional marketing opportunities. And there will be individuals that will consider relocating their businesses here, jobs here, based upon this improvement in transportation. Transportation is, is, is the key to economic growth, getting people to it, getting it to them in a swift way. And, you're, and that's why uh, I think it's just an excellent. And I, I think most economic indicators predict that over a while, 
utilized properly, uh, the economic value of this region is going to double. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tyson, for your question. Thank you, Congressman Scott and Mr. Osborne, for your response. The next person that we have up is Pat Smith. She is a resident of our downtown area, and she lives in the historic district and also serves on our downtown development yeah, authority. Right. Thank you for being here, Congressman. Sure, sure. Um, you touched on my question a little bit just a minute ago. Um, once this project is complete, how do you see it affecting our downtown Douglasville area? Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Please? Sure. Well, I think what it's going to do is give you an opportunity to basically expand your downtown area. Uh, one of the good points about this is that if you see where this road comes in and connects with Fairburn right there at Hospital Drive, that's your main road. It feeds right into your downtown area. Um, and I think that uh, with the proper kinds of um, advertisements, directionals, that you can take advantage of some of the, uh, some of the uh, attractions that are downtown, the businesses that are downtown, uh, and, and, and be able to uh, channel traffic in this direction. Uh, with the increased traffic comes the increased opportunities for people so that you can you can change it. So basically, as I see it, based upon the logistics of, uh, of where it ends and feeds into Hospital Drive, uh, it creates a great opportunity there. Uh, keep in mind also that that whole configuration is going to change. There's going to be unique kinds of cul-de-sacs there. That's going to be your downtown area. When that, when that new tunnel opens up to go under that railroad and come out, uh, there's also going to be an added uh, lane to, I think, an excess to, I think it's Maxwell and Strickland that comes up on the other side of Broad Street. I think also you're going to have a new, uh, 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 what we call grade crossing uh, that's going to move from that old Dallas, the Dallas Highway comes over, up to just before you get to Rose Avenue. Um, so. Uh, that traffic is going to come up that way. And so what you've got here now, you've got a flow of traffic coming up with the grade crossing moved up to near Rose Avenue. Traffic is going to come through there. Your downtown now becomes the center with it coming, from, coming in from hospital. So I think that the onus is on, uh, and you have some great business people here, you have an excellent chamber, to be able to provide you with a marketing and advertising mechanism to be able to take this new traffic and move it into the attractions in the downtown area. All right. Thank you, Ms. Smith. The next person we have up is Kim Jackson Banks. She owns a business that services the Brown Street area. Good afternoon, David Scott. Yes. Congressman Scott. I would like to ask you, um, because of the path of this new traffic flow that we're going to have here, the businesses how are the um, businesses going to be affected, um, the ones that are going to be displaced with the new realignment? Well, there's going to be probably, from what I understand, most of those businesses are going to be with what is known as the, I think, the big lot uh, community, and that's that uh, shopping center there. Uh, the chamber, uh, my office, uh, the city of Douglasville are all working with those business owners who will be located. I think primarily the bulk of those are Hispanics, Hispanic businesses. So what we want to do is to make sure we have the resources in place, put forward the proper attention and the sensitivities to trying to relocate these in another location, but we have to do it hopefully keeping those businesses together because they feed on, uh, on themselves. Um, the only other area of impact that I think we have to be concerned about uh, that I believe uh, where it would be the old, the, what will become the old Dallas Highway area. A lot of businesses on there that comes up along old, uh, against Dallas Highway as you get towards uh, Stewart Middle School. There are service stations, there are garages, there are churches, there are um, a restaurant, barbershops, those kinds of things. We're going to have to develop a joint 
uh, effort with the chamber and the downtown to stretch downtown. That's why I'm saying that the great benefit to your downtown is that this will connect those two sides uh, of the town in a way. And I think uh, with the new crossing up there near Rose, as you get off, as you, you, you got traffic coming in from Chicago Avenue on that side, uh, and those shops that are on the old Dallas Highway, I think the doubt can be merged into a more comprehensive downtown plan um, to, uh, to deal with that. I think that you're also connected with the, the child care center, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and that area in the Brown community. To my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, um, I've been out there. I don't believe there's any displacement or relocation for any of those businesses in that area. I think the key thing there is to make sure we have accessibility, and that's why I'm saying we increase, um, like a Jesse Davis and Davis Drive and that area coming in there, uh, that there needs to be pedestrian crossings at the beginning of that, down there at Malone Street, and then maybe up near Davis Street coming over so people can get to the other side. You've got the Alice Hawthorne Community Center. You've got the Majestic Learning Center. You've also right there, um, you've got Avalon Apartments. There's some stores along there. Uh, none of those will be displaced. So, but they, they will be inconvenienced. And so we just have to have a plan to work with those. Yes. All right. Thank you, Ms. Banks. And our final question for the congressman will be from Ms. Atia Pounds. She's a community activist. She serves on several different committees, and she always comes when we call for help. <laughs> We're running short on time, so we just have a few moments to fin finish up this last question. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, Congressman Scott, and thank you for coming. My question, question is, how will this overall impact our community? Well, this is going to impact your community in a very, very positive way. Um, but the key to that, as I said before, is that the community buys into it. The community is informed that they have all the intelligence to make the right decisions. We have all the expertise to make this road neighborhood friendly, pedestrian friendly, and enhance the residential quality of life. That is the key. It's up to the people in Douglasville to help us to say, this is what we want this road to be. It's twofold. It's not just to move people through your community. That's important, to get people through. But we want people to stop in this community. We want them to visit the restaurants. We want them to visit the businesses in the restaurant. But most importantly, this road has to satisfy and make happy the people who live the, have to live around it. The people who have to go to church in the community, have to take their kids to school in the community, the people who have staked their futures in their homes in this community. And that is the key. If the people love living around this road and with this road and buy into it, then it's just going to be wonderful. Uh, and uh, I, I can't wait for that to happen. I can't wait to get out here with the mayor and with Bill and everybody. That's going to be a great day when we put that shovel in the ground, and I hope that day comes soon. Thank you, Congress Congressman Scott, for joining us on uh, City Connector today. Uh, we really appreciate your, Thank you. your, your coming on to answer the questions, and uh, we'll see you next time on City Connector. <laughs>